Evening. Good evening, and God's blessings to each and every one of you. Those of you who are here in the sanctuary with us, those of you who I have tuned into the live streaming, we're grateful to God for allowing us to be back here in the house of worship on this Tuesday night for our Bible study hour. Thank God so much for traveling mercy. Uh, for those that are here, for those who may be en route here, um, we thank God, praying God's protection over them down the highways and byways. Um, for those who have tuned in, we pray God's blessings upon you, upon your family, um, upon your entire household. We're just so thankful for God, um, for all that he's done and for all he's doing, for all that he continued to do. And in spite of it all, um, I'm, I'm, I am, I can't speak for anyone else, but I'm just counting it all joy as the Bible instructs me to. I'm just counting it all joy and just continue to trust God to see me through. Uh, trust God to do what only God can do in the midst of all that's going on. So again, I'm so ever thankful for each and every one of you for joining us in this Bible study hour. We pray tonight um, for God's will to be done in this place. We are praying for uh, the perfect teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit as always to lead and guide us in this Bible study hour. Our aim and our goal is to learn to grow together and that in the process someone will be saved someone will accept christ as their lord and savior because that's what it's all about jesus says i come to call the righteous um i come to call the sinner um not the righteous and so that's that's our goal and that's our aim that that people will be saved that's why we do what we do god saved us so that through us he can save others and so that's, that's what we want to do in our Bible study. We want to learn and grow together in the Word of God so that we don't have to second guess. We don't have to wonder. We want to know. Paul says to um, study to show yourself approved. And so that's what we do in our Bible study. We want to study to show ourselves approved uh, unto God, not unto man. We want to show ourselves um, um, approved unto God. Um, and so that's why we study. That's why we come together to share in the word of God, because as we study the word of God, we'll learn and we'll grow in the word of God. And that's the thing that happens to, helps to strengthen us that we'll, so that we'll be able to stand in the midst of trials and tests and tribulations and all of that other stuff that we have to deal with on a daily basis. It's the word of God that will help us to stand in the midst of it all. And so again, thank you tonight for joining us. I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. We'll go back into our lesson. We're talking about treasure, storing treasure up in heaven. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity of allowing us to be back here in the house of worship for this Bible study hour. God, we're praying that you would control this Bible study by, the way, of, by way of your Holy Spirit, that he would guide our hearts and our minds, guide our thoughts, guide our tongue, Heavenly Father, in the things that we may say in the things that we want to say. God, we're just praying that your will be done in this place. Your will be done in each and every one of our lives. Uh, that, why, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, you will teach us that we will know so that we can grow. And so that we'll be vessels of instrument that you can use to teach others, Heavenly Father. Pray for those that are here, those that have tuned in to the live streaming. Pray that you'll um, will be done. Pray that you will bless every household and every home that's represented, Heavenly Father. And now I decrease that you will increase. Use me, God, for your glory. Use me for your good, pressure, good pleasure. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak through me as you speak to me unto your people. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. 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 And so we want to go back into our lesson. We're talking about uh, <clears throat> storing up treasure in heaven, um, treasure that will last, treasure that will endure, treasure that will stand the test of time, treasure that we don't have to worry about, um, treasure that we don't have to run behind because it's being stored up and it's being kept by the power of God. And so we don't have to worry about anybody stealing it, anybody taking it away. It, um, the moth or the rust. We don't have to worry about any of that. And so we, talk, we began talking about on last week um, where our treasure is. That's where our heart will be. And we talked about this being a truth and a most weight, weighty reason why we should not make 
anything on earth our treasure. For whatever we make our treasure gains possession of our heart, which we talked about on last week. If, 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 it, if it is something that we treasure, it has gained possession of our hearts. And I was saying on last week, you know, that may be part of the reason why we're not as active as we once were in church. That's why um, maybe part of the reason why we don't um, follow after God the way we once did when we first came to Christ. You know, we don't give much um, effort to the ministries that we serve on. Well, we'll say sometimes, well, you know, they just probably just going to talk about the same thing. Or if you're part of the choir, they're probably just going to go over the same old songs. And, you know, you go to any, any other meeting, they're just going to be talking about the same old thing. Um, but 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 it ought to be it ought to be a difference if if we are sincere about what we're doing for Christ because what we're doing for Christ is we're laying up treasure. We're laying up treasure again. You know when we talk about I guess this is the best analogy that we could use because everybody pretty much I guess have a bank account, but but you know by the same token. You don't never put no money in there. You ain't gonna get no money out. You know, we 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 expecting to go to heaven, but we are not laying up treasure to go. So you you want to be mindful of what you're doing, as 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 the Bible. Only what we do for Christ will last. And as I mentioned on last week, when we stand before God in judgment, we will stand before God based on the works that we have done. And the, Bible, and the Bible reminds us, Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace were we saved through faith. We were created for good work. We were created to work. And so that notion where, where folk have said, well, you know, I just, I just go to church and as long as I got a seat in the kingdom, I'll be fine. How do you know? Peter reminds us that if the righteous scarcely make it in, how much of a chance do you have? How much of a chance do you think all the rest have? They don't have much. They don't have much of a chance. That's that's if that's for the the righteous, barely making. It. That means we ain't got time for all that those other shenanigans, all that other stuff. We ain't got time. We ain't got, we ain't got time for all that. We don't we don't want to we don't want to get caught with our work undone. And so we don't have time for that. But he says whatsoever. You treasure will have possession of your heart. Our heart, that is where our affections, our hopes, our dreams will be. It is our treasure. If our treasure is on earth, our hearts will experience much disappointment as things for which you have affection um, decay or are one day destroyed by fire as things in which you find your primary joy are suddenly gone through things like lost, if our treasure is in heaven, our hearts will not suffer great disappointment because of our perspective of what we're going to gain. This is one of the reasons why when you look at Philippians in the third chapter, one of the reasons why Paul says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and I'm pressing forth towards the mark of a higher call in Christ. Why? Because I have much more to gain. That's why Paul could write in, in Romans, for I, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to what I shall receive. And so what I'm going through down here, what I'm going to receive up there makes it all worth it. That's the perspective that we have. And so as long as we have that perspective, we will not suffer great disappointment for first of all, our treasure is incorruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade away. Nothing can take our treasure away from us, for it is reserved in heaven. And it is kept by the power of God through faith. It's reserved. You ever go to a banquet or you ever go um, to a dinner or wherever you go where they take reservations, and, and you'll either see a sign on the table that says, this, this table is reserved or this seat is reserved. That's what our treasure is. It's reserved. Nobody can take it. Nobody can get it. It's reserved just for you. That table is reserved for whoever those people are that reserved it. And they're not going to let anybody sit there as long as it's on reserve. 
So that's a, that's a good thing. We have treasure that's reserved, and it's being kept by the power of God through faith. Whatever happens on earth will not devastate us. And I know there's a lot of things that happen that shake us, but it, doesn't de it won't devastate us. And, and the Bible is our example. That's what the Bible says. The Bible was written for our example. And I know I, because I mentioned it on, on, on Friday, you know, no matter how much um, we experience death here, it still hurts. We, it, it still hurts, and, and, and we still go through, no matter how much. But the Bible, but the Bible warns us that these things are going to happen. That, that, that we're all pilgrims just passing through. That, that at some point in time, our number is going to come up. Our, our number is going to come up when we're going to have to leave here. And so the Bible, the Bible warns us that these things are going to happen, just like devastation and destruction. The Bible tells us that these are things are going to happen. But for, for us not to be surprised, and I said this here before because we're going to, maybe, maybe before we leave here, we're going to get it together because the Bible encourages us that when, when, when those who are in Christ die, we are to rejoice. And, and, and the problem is, and the problem is this, we're talking about treasure in heaven, because those who die in Christ, we know where they are going to go. And so, and so th this is the problem because when we, when we come together, and usually when we're at a funeral, it's a setting where you have sinners and saints. The problem is, is that when the unbeliever is sitting in a funeral service, they don't know the difference. And so when, when, when they're sitting in a funeral service, their expectation is that everybody who has died is going to heaven. That's why they always say, well, they're in a better place now. If your life does not say that, that's, that, that's not a better place. And the reason why is because they don't see the distinction, the difference between the saved and the unsaved. We conduct ourselves most of the time now in funeral service just like the unbeliever. We have loved ones who die in Christ, and, we, and this, is, this is what we say we're living for. We're living to live again, we say. But we, but we conduct ourselves in such a way that, that, that sometimes... The believer wonder what they really say. Mm, I can't tell. The way they're carrying on, I can't tell. The Bible encourages us that we ought to rejoice. When, we, when those who are in Christ die, we ought to rejoice. Why? Because it's a celebration. Because now we have passed from this life to a life that's eternal. That's what we ought to be celebrating. But we can't celebrate that if we don't know. If the life that they were living don't line up with what the word of God says, that's, that's question mark. Yeah. 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 You got to make sure. You got you to you make sure. Um, and so you want to you lay up some treasure while you're here on earth so that when that time comes, you don't have to wonder, nor will people have to wonder. When these words are taken to heart and applied, the storms of life will not overwhelm us. Not that they won't come. We already know that they're going to come because, again, the Bible tells us that the storms of life are going to come. We're going to, we're going to go through trials and tribulations. They come to everyone. If you've been fortunate enough not to experience it now, just keep on living. As the senior saints would say, just keep on living. Or, or better yet, just keep on waking up to the sunrise because it's going to find your address. Everybody goes through trials and tribulations, and everybody going to experience some storms. But, but, but what we have in Christ, they will not overwhelm us or overtake us. Not, not, if, not if we take the words to heart, because we have built our foundation upon the words of Jesus. Matthew 7, 24 to 27, and it says... Therefore, whatever, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. 
But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was that fall. You ever seen a house where they started construction on them, construction and then it was left undone? Many, many times that, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the believer's life because we'll accept Christ, we'll start out in Christ, we'll begin to build a foundation and then we'll stray away from it. And so there's an, there's an unfinished foundation and, 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 what, and, what, and what Jesus is simply saying here, that if that foundation is not solid, that's why I just said, if you take the words to heart, you're, you won't be overwhelmed by the song. Because if, that's, if that foundation is not a solid foundation, the storms of life are going to rip you apart. And we'll find ourselves doing the very thing that we didn't think we would do. This is the question that I ask people. For, for those who have committed suicide, do you really think that's what they wanted to do? Do you, do you really think that a person in their right frame of mind would want to take their life? No. But if they're overwhelmed by the pressures of life, it could lead to them taking their life. See, that's why I keep telling you, there has to be a vast difference between the saved and the unsaved. And what we have in Christ is that we have a solid foundation that we're standing on. We have a, 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 a sure help that when we're going through the storms of life, we have a sure help. And that help is in Christ Jesus. We know that as believers, or at least we ought to know that as believers. But for the unbeliever, they don't know that. They believe that every storm, every trial, every test that comes, they're strong enough to conquer it. It's not a physical fight. It's spiritual warfare, whether you know it or not. The Bible says that we're dealing with principalities, spiritual wickedness, and high places, rulers of darkness. It's a spiritual warfare. You are never, even for the, even for the believer. You are never going to be able to win a spiritual battle fighting from a fleshly standpoint. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And whether the unbeliever believes it or not, there are demons, there are... <laughs> okay, let me, let me move on <laughs> Let, let, me, let, me, let me move on, but I, I just want to throw this in here. I, I just want to throw this in here because, because wh whether we want to believe it or not, wh whether we want to believe it or not, some of those bad habits are not bad habits like we think. That, that's simply called demon possession. That's why you can't stop. And every time you think you got it together, here comes another one. Why do, you, why, why do you think people go from one extreme to the other? You'll, so you, you, you'll have one, they'll start out on alcohol, then next thing you know, they're, they're on drugs, and then next thing you know, they're doing something. It goes from one stream to another. Because anytime, anytime a demon comes and takes up residence, he always brings some others with him. Because nobody in their right mind would do some of the things that people who say they're in their right mind would do. Not nobody in their right mind. And so we're dealing with forces far greater than some of us even understand. And we refuse to get understanding of it because we just don't believe that kind of stuff happened. Not in our church. Devil is a liar. To keep our eye good, understanding the metaphor used by Jesus, the body likely represents the soul or inner man. The eye likely represents the gaze of the soul or the heart of man. 
The word good in Greek means simple or single, uncomplicated. The word bad in Greek means wicked, evil. In the scriptures, the expression evil eye is used to mean envious or covetous. Proverbs 23 and says, says 23 and 6 says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Matthew 20 and 15, Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? Hmm. Mark 7 and 22, And he said, that which cometh out of man is what defileth man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Watch this. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Therefore, you no longer have to wonder why some people say the things they say and why some people do the things that they will do. It's because of all of these things that's within. And as long as you're outside of Christ, those will be the things that will control your life as long as you live it. Because those are the things that's within. And until you accept Christ and, be and, be and become a new creation in Christ, there is nothing for you or within you that suppresses your old nature. When we accept Christ as our Savior, we take on the nature of Christ, the new nature. And we, the Bible says that we receive the Spirit of God. That is what, what helps you to overcome these things. That's why we say, I don't walk like I used to talk. I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't act the way I used to talk, act because the, 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 my, my new nature is ridding me of these old things. And the Bible says that that, that before Christ, all of us dealt with all these things. All of us. That's why I say some of you were. We dealt with all of those things before Christ. That's why, that's why, that, that's why no matter how good you think you may be, it's not good enough. It's not, it's not good enough. If we, if we could make it in based on, on good, I, I, know, I know some people who've done a lot of good. But that's not how you get in. Because just as you have those who, who do good, you, you, by the same token, they can do bad. Because we all have the um, propensity to do evil, even in our best state. And the flip side of that is, even bad people do good. There has to be a vast difference between the saved and unsaved. If you make it in on just doing good, well, the unbeliever can do some good. Serving the Lord comes with benefits. Benefits that the unsaved is not entitled to. But we're sometimes so saved, we want them to experience the same benefits that we experience. You, you want to know why everyone not a member of American Express? You ever took notice that they slogan, their slogan? Membership has its privileges, which means, which means American Express is going to do for their members what nobody else does or nobody else can get unless you're a member of American Express. 
Everybody's not titled, entitled to the benefits that we receive as born again believers. But we want everybody to experience. Well, the only way you can experience, you got to come to this side because you won't experience it on that side. We're talking about laying up treasure in heaven. You got to, you got to, you got to, what we're doing now is laying up treasures in heaven. Explaining the metaphor used by Jesus, if the heart or gaze of the soul be good, single in its love for the things of God, then one is filled with light. That simply means goodness, righteousness, and truth. Ephesians 5, 8 through 10, for we, for ye were sometimes, as I was mentioned earlier, for we, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Therefore walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. If you say that you are in Christ, you are born again, then you need to live like it. That's how you prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. We have to walk like it. We have to live like it. If the heart or gaze of the soul be evil, uh, which means full of envy, covetousness, then one's soul is filled with darkness, selfishness, wickedness, and falsehood. Thus the need for Jesus' warning to guard what goes in our eyes. Gotta be mindful of what you're looking at. Woo. What you allow your eyes to dwell upon. Remember, there is such a thing as the lust of the eyes. To be rich toward God, free from covetousness. That's co he covers that in Luke 12, 13 to 21. But take special note to Jesus' warning in Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And I mentioned last week, we accumulate all this stuff here. We can't take it anywhere. We can't, we can't take it anywhere. And when we leave it, most of it, if not all of it, is just going to get squandered or lost in the process. That's, 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 that's the unfortunate side of what happens to all this stuff that we accumulate and we die and leave here. Because surely, in the words of Job, naked we came, and naked is the same way we're going to leave. Paul likewise warns of the danger of materialism or, or covetousness. Those who desire to be rich will fall. 1 Timothy 6, 9. And again, this, this, not, this not saying that we can't have money. This not saying that we can't have wealth. That's not, that's not what the Bible is saying. Again, as I mentioned on last week, it's, 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 it's the eye you have for obtaining it and what you're doing once you have it. Because remember again, I said, where, 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 as the Bible says, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And whatever the things you treasure the most, it's the things that have your heart. And sometimes... What's, what's so unfortunate is sometimes we don't, we don't even realize. And that's why I always warn us about getting stuck in routine. Because we come to church every Sunday and we sit in some Bible study classes and, you know, we get stuck in routine. And so we figure, you know, everything is copacetic. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. That's in our mind. Everything is fine. But it's not what's in your mind. It's what's in your heart. Yeah. And many times you have folks sitting right in service. And their mind is way over on the other side of town. Yeah. For some, it's right on their bank account. And some, 
It, I, our mind is sometimes everywhere but where it should be. First Timothy 6, 9. But they that will be rich, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. They get trapped in snares and temptation and fall into many foolish and harmful lusts to drown in destruction and perdition. From one extreme to the other. Go from one extreme to the other. One day you're here, next day you're down here. From one, one extreme to the other. And if we're and if and if, and, and what 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 he's saying, what Paul is saying here is, if we're if we're chasing riches, we're gonna fall by them. We're we're going to fall by them. And not on, not on, not only that, they they they're going to lead us into many foolish and harmful lusts. Because it ain't it ain't always just the money that we're chasing. Huh. 1 Timothy 6, 16, for the love of money is the root of all kinds. I know some interpretations say, for the love of money is the root of evil. This translation say, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And it's true, because in it, if, you look, if you look throughout history, you look throughout history, go back, go back in time, go back throughout history. And everything, everything that was done that was evil, it was money driven. It was motivated by money. Our government is probably the worst there is. Everything about them is driven by greed and money. Everything. And I wouldn't be surprised. I know I'm live. I know I'm live. If that down the road, this thing right here will spring up with money behind it. Because even right now, if truth be told, there's a lot of people getting paid. There's a lot of people getting paid. That's the truth. Go do the research. There's a lot of people getting paid. A lot of people that are getting paid is money behind everything that happens in our society. Yes, and there are people getting paid right now. Yes, and so with anything, and with anything else that brings in a lot of money, they don't ever want it to go nowhere no time soon. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. See, a lot, see a few people's eyes getting wide. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that the cases are not going up. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, Look at what's behind that. And what you will discover, not everything you're hearing is the whole truth. That's why they tell you in the court of law, do you swear to tell the truth nothing but the whole truth? So help me God. There's a difference between telling the truth and telling the whole truth. And most people will tell you, no, I just neglected to tell you that part. That's called a lie. That has nothing to do with the truth. But I'm just saying, you got, you got, you, you, you got, it's, this, it, it's the same thing we talk about uh, as, as a people. You got to take responsibility for your health. You got to take responsibility for your well-being. You got to take responsibility of knowing what's going on in society. And then you got to step out of society and know what's going on around the world because everything that happens around the world have a direct impact upon you in this world. You got to you got to go outside of Hollandale. There's a much bigger world than Hollandale. And you got and you got to know what's going on. Stop waiting on people to give you information. Get the truth for yourself. Find out the facts for yourself. Yes, yes. That's right. 
Yeah, it's a pandemic, and we've got to be careful. We've got to be cautious. We've got to do all of that. We've got to do all of that. But don't just keep listening and taking what you're hearing. Find out the facts for yourself. And most of the stuff that you're hearing, most of this stuff, you can pull it right up online. A lot of it, you, you, you got to check the source, though, now. You got, got to make sure of the source now. Because not, not everything you Google is accurate, and not every source that you're hearing is, you, you, got, you got to do your research. But we got to take the initiative to do our part. The only way you're going to know what's going on is that you take the initiative to find out. And so that's got to, got to stop. But, 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 if, but, if, but if we're chasing money, we're, we're, going, we're going to get caught in snares and temptations, and we're going to fall into many foolish and harmful lusts. Money leads to other things. Other things going to lead to some other things. And so that's what the Bible is saying. We're going to fall into some harmful lust, and eventually those things are going to end up taking our life. I know y'all don't want to hear that. But that's the truth. That, that's, the tr that's the truth. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, from which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness. Yeah, some of those folks chasing money out there, they were in the church. They, they got a taste of the other side of life. Yeah. And I guess the grass appeared a little greener. Yeah. So he said they have, they, they have strayed from the faith in their greediness from which some have pierced themselves with many sorrows. Yeah. Because there are some who are still chasing and there are some who are living in the lap of sorrow because of their greediness. And for many of them, they found out the hard way and it was too late to change it. And so now they're living in sorrow. That's the Bible. That's what the Bible says. 1 Timothy 16, read it, read it, read it. To make good, uh, to make God our master. Uh, Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve, no one can serve two masters. A master by, defini by definition means demands. A master by definition demands total loyalty. And we are unable to please two masters at the same time. It's not going to happen. We already discussed that. Not going to happen. We have to be if, 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 we, if we profess Christ and if we belong to the Lord, we have, he demands our loyalty, our total loyalty. And no, that's not just you coming to church. That's not just you doing the, the little things that you do. That's, that's total loyalty to God. If we're, if we're totally loyal to God, we'll do all the other stuff. Because we're grateful. And we appreciate all that God has done for us. And so nobody has to tell us to serve. We want to serve because God has been good to us. We want to do all of those other things because of our relationship that we have now with Christ. And so nobody has to tell us. Nobody has to tell us when we're not coming to church. You need to get back in the church. Within, we already know. We just need to do. But if, but if, we, have, if we have total... Um, loyalty, total devotion to God, we'll do the things that we need to do. We, and that, and, and that, and there, are, there are some Sundays when we won't be able to make it to church. That's between you and God. But it doesn't mean that we don't have loyalty to God. We don't know what everybody's doing on Sunday morning. Granted, some folks may be in the mall. Some, some may be cooking their Sunday dinner. And this is this is always this, this is always the, the, the thing that I that, that really bothers me, and I and I mentioned this here one one Sunday because you, you have to understand the, the 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 tricks of the enemy. You gotta you gotta understand the tricks of the enemy. But one of the reasons why most religions see Christianity as a weak religion. And that's why most people walk away from it. Be because we allow 
too much. No. We allow too much to happen on our time of worship. The mall want to have sales. They want to have all these sports activities taking place on Sundays. All, 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 all of these things that take away from our worship time. Cross over to the Jewish religion. Cross over to the seven-day events. See if they've been. And assure you they won't. They stand, and, and their stands is a live or die by. It's what they live by. We have one day. The Jewish Sabbath consists of the weekend. They do nothing, nothing by way of work. Anything that takes away from their Sabbath to God, they do nothing. We have one day that we offer to God and we allow any and everything to disrupt it. But we're going to heaven anyhow. Somebody's been fooling themselves for a long time. We allow any and everything to happen. We'll have friends who are called who know we go to church on Sunday. Bro, they having this thing. Man, let's just run. No. You you gotta you you gotta you you gotta get to the place where not only your friends but also your family members know what I do at these particular times. So don't even pick up the phone to call me. Don't even stop by because you know what I'm going to do. I'm not breaking. I'm not bending because it's what I do. And I can assure you, if you're consistent with doing so, I can assure you that it'll get to the place where they won't even ask no more. And that's what you want. That's what you want. Don't even ask. Don't, don't even ask. Because I'm not going to pop up. I'm not going to show up. Not at these times. No. No. But, but, but it, just, it just really amazes me that, that, that we'll always take what we give, take the time that we have, have dedicated to God to do everything else. This is, this is the time that we declare as our worship day unto God. The seven-day event is declared, declared, decided that it was Saturday, so they do it on Saturday. Fine. Doesn't matter. My faith, my faith teaches me that every day is a Sabbath unto God, but this day in particular is the one that we come together corporately and worship God. And so nothing should take away from that. But we allow any and everything to come against that. Maybe if we spent more time giving God, dedicating ourselves to God all the rest of the days, this day wouldn't be a problem. I'm just saying. Because, because the, the, more I, the more I serve, the more I, you, you know, the more I serve, the more I fellowship, the closer I get to God, the more I long to be in the house of God. It's just something about being in the house of God. And it's the, and it's the, and it's the time that we have decided to come together corporately to worship God and, and we don't sometimes understand what we gain by doing so we don't understand what we gain by doing so I'm telling you and, 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 I, hope, and I hope I'll be around because I'm telling you I'm t and I said this before and y'all better write this down because I'm telling you that the day is coming that what we, how we do church, the day is coming where all that's going to change. All that's going to change. And when you go to John chapter 4, what's going to happen is what John writes in John chapter 4. That God is looking for the true worshipers. That's the kind of worship that God is seeking. And that's what's going to happen 
in churches that is going to be filled with worshipers. And that's all that's going to be taking place is worship. Right. No order of service. No. It's going to go back to what they were doing in the Bible days. Ah. Somebody get up and read the scripture. Somebody do some exhortation. And then they go into worship. Yeah. Yeah. To the point to where mm. the presence of God just feel yeah. the sanctuary. And, then when that, and when that happens... Those who, those who are not in Christ will not be able to be around. Because that's on a whole nother level. And we all, we get up here and we pray God come into our service. You know, have your way in our service. If God ever came up in this service, <laughs> for most, they will be terrified. Most people sitting in here on Sunday morning will be terrified. But if God ever showed up in our service, not one of us in here would be remain the same. Not one of us. We'd be just like we'll be just like Jacob was. Jacob got up and said, surely the Lord was in this place. And I didn't even realize it. We'll be just like Jacob was. If God ever showed up in our service, we would be messed up if we're not prepared to receive him when he comes. He's here. His presence is always here. But, but, but the psalmist says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. That means that while God's presence is here, something is happening. He ain't just here. Something is happening. And a lot of things are going to change. A lot of things are going to happen. God really showed up in our service, we definitely, Ebenezer would definitely not be the same. It will not be the same. It can't remain the same. Not once the presence of God has been here. But we say, come and show up in our service. If you do, you better be prepared to receive him when he comes show up. So it'd be just like the children of Israel. We won't hear Moses, we won't hear God talk by ourselves. It'd be just like that experience there. But we can't serve two masters. And God wants total loyalty from those who profess him. He wants total loyalty. We need to, we need, we need to decide or make up our mind who it is we're going to give our loyalty to. And if it's going to be God, the only way to prove that is by our service unto him. It's the only way we could prove it. By, by our service unto God. Such is certainly true with God. Exodus uh, 34 and 14, for thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. That's why he won't total loyalty. Because he's a jealous God. And God has every right to be a jealous God. Because God has done for, more, for us more than anyone else. And so he's been there more than anyone else. He's provided for us more than anyone else. And so he has every right to be a jealous God. Because it's God who has saved and redeemed us out of the hand of the enemy. And so everything, everything we are, everything we hope to be, we owe it all to God. Yeah. We owe it all to God. And so he ought to, he have every right to be a jealous God. I know, I, I, can, I, I just saw, I just saw my time. Do we have any, any questions? Oh, Lord. <laughs> any questions, any comments, any concerns? We have, we have questions? Okay, we'll, we'll take a few moments. We want to answer some questions. We always try to um, 
answer some questions if we can. <sighs> I have to take a deep breath. All right, I'm ready. Once saved, does the new nature replace the old nature, or does it constantly war with the old nature? It is constantly at war. And the one that's going to win the battle is the one that you cater to the most. Our old nature is not going anywhere. We overcome our nature by, by, by putting on the new nature, which the Bible tells us <laughs> to be filled with the Spirit and, 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 when we are filled with the Spirit, we begin to take on that new nature, those things that are of the Spirit, and those are the things that help us to overcome those old nature or, or, or those old things that really had us bound. We begin, to, we begin to get rid of those things and replace them with our new nature, but it's a constant war. It's a tug of war. And it's the one that you cater to the most that will win the tug of war. You have to feed, you have to feed your, your new nature. It doesn't live off the things that the flesh, the old nature live off of. Our flesh craves a lot of things. Our new nature, all you need, all he needs is the word of God. Feed him that, and he'll help you to overcome anything, anything. But it's a constant tug of war. And most, most believers who are walking away from the faith are walking away because they're losing the battle, because they're fighting it the wrong way. If you don't feed your spirit man, he has nothing to fight with. He has to, you have to read the word of God. You got to get into the word of God. Because that's what he responds to. But yes, it's a constant war. What is the true benefit of our Sunday morning worship? Strength, encouragement, fellowship, oneness, all of those things that um, edification, all of those things that, that, that we need um, to help one another to get along. Sunday morning worship is, is our time of coming together corporately, worshiping and praising God, and in the process, being strengthened by God and strengthening one another, encouraging one another, edifying one another. We come here on Sunday morning as a source of strength to one another. And so when, when, we're, when, we're, when we're not here on Sunday morning, and again, I know, I know we're not going to always be able to make it every Sunday morning, um, but, 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 the, but the idea is, is that we at least become, be more consistent in coming than we are in not showing up. Because when we're not here, um, somebody goes lacking what you, what you were supposed to bring to the table. Sometimes it's, it's, it's what you bring that may encourage or edify somebody else. Not, 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 sometime, not so much sometimes the singing, not so much sometimes the prayers that are being prayed. Sometimes it's just the presence of, the, of what that other person brings that sometimes encourages or sometimes strengthens, sometimes edifies. Um, Pastor Johnson would say all the time, you know, there are some people who all he had to do was see the smile on their face and, and it just gave him everything he needed. And some people bring that. Some people, some people bring that. Some, for some people, it's a gift. Some people have the gift of consolation. Some people have the gift of encouragement. And so when we have these manifestation gifts and, and we're not here, that means somebody goes lacking. Somebody's not getting what they need. And, and, and we say, we say, it's not what the word of God said. We say that this is a hospital. But where are all the doctors and the nurses? Ain't nobody on the staff? You got a, you got a sanctuary full of sick people. Where are the doctors and the nurses at? <laughs> I 
I may be locked in surgery. What's that? I, I think I think a lot of people base that off of Sodom and Gomorrah whenever they see disasters happening to other countries like that. I think a lot of people think that that must be a lot of wickedness that's going on over there and God is deal, dealing with them um, the same way he dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah. That, that is, that, those are natural disasters and, and those can take place anywhere. When we talk about Evil. When we talk about wickedness, we're, we're one of the worst places in the world, according to statistics. As a matter of fact, we're, we're, we're on the bottom of the totem pole as places to live. And so when we talk about, and that's why we have to be careful when we say that, because we're one of the worst places in the world when it comes to wickedness and evil. And, 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 when you, and when you consider the fact all the hurricanes that have came and gone around us and spared us, yes. the flip side would be this. Then maybe God is sparing y'all in hopes that y'all will get right yeah. Yeah. before the day of destruction. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't think that. They just think that happened in other places. Yeah. No, that's just one of those things that has happened. That has to do with natural disasters. That has that 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 has to do um, with, with with sometimes the progression of um, where where storms come about. What the you know um, the positioning of the sun. It has a, it has a, 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 to do with a whole lot of things that factor in. But if, but but if, again, if we're reading what the Word of God says, the Word of God says that there are going to be earthquakes and dire places. We've had earthquakes. That's not supposed to happen. Nah. God's will is that none should die, none should perish. What, what, is, what is happening in Haiti is unfortunate, but it could be happening anywhere. Not, not, just, not just there. And, and, and Haiti, Haiti is it's, it's not the worst place in the world um, when, when you consider all the evil and wickedness in all the other parts of the world. Now, it's just it's just unfortunate that is that is happening to them again, but it could be happening to any of us because you you just never know with the way things are going and. Because I, I declare, I, I think the sun is every year get closer and closer to the earth. And, 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 and with that, that's going to bring about some other natural disasters that we eventually going to have to deal with. And our, and our thing is, because, because, because we, we have brothers and sisters over there, and our thing is, is that we pray. We pray for them. We, we pray for them. Those, those, those are brothers and sisters that profess Christ as well. So we pray for them. But it could be, you know, if they are, they time now, it could be ours tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? The bottom line is, we have to make sure. We have to make sure that our soul is anchored. We got to. We got to make sure. You know. We and and I was talking about it, about it earlier. You know. Um, you have you you have people 
who don't want to come to church, people who don't want to be a part of the church, but but when when, when they die or when they lose loved ones, they want to do their funeral at the church, and you know, and and and, and a lot of churches, a lot of churches, are only do members only, you know, and eventually that may be the direction that all churches go to, because membership has its privileges. Memberships have its, its privileges. And, 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 and the unbelievers are not entitled to what the believers are privy to. That's, that's, that's just Bible. That's not me. That's just Bible. And that's why, and that's why, that's why people get a covering. Get under a covering. Join the church. And if you don't go every Sunday, maybe eventually you'll start going every Sunday. Maybe eventually you'll start going but get a cover. Because eventually, that's where we're gonna head. Eventually, that's where it's gonna, that's what it's gonna lead to. And there's a lot of churches who don't do that now. Who don't, who don't do that now. If you're not a member, you can't have, you, you can't have um, your, your service there because some churches don't allow it. So I'm just saying. You know, I'm I'm just saying that, and that's why I say we have to be, we have to be up on, on current events. You gotta know what's going on. You got to you got to know what's going on. You know, and we 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 hold several funerals here and no matter how much we try to extend ourselves to help people, we always get this, we always get slighted. We always get slighted. Always. Always. I ain't want to go there but, you know, but I'm just saying. You know, you try to help people because because that's that's what we call. We we're called to be a beacon. But we can't keep getting beat up all the time for trying to do what's right. No. That, that, you know, that, that, that's not fair. No. That's not fair. No. Because I can assure you, I can assure you, do, 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 check, check the record. No. I can assure you, we've been a constant source of help no. down throughout the years and to this present day. We have been a constant source of help. Far more than a whole lot of others can say. But who always gets slighted? We're the worst servant in the world. I'm done now. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Any other questions, any other comments, any other concerns? We thank God for those who submitted some questions. We thank God for those, again, who are here. Thank you all so very much, those of you who have tuned in. I was just being a little bit, you know, it, right is right, though. Um, but thank God so much for each and every one of you. We, we thank you and hope that you have um, been encouraged, that you have been inspired. We pray that this Bible study has been a lesson to you. And again, you want to lay up treasure in heaven. Lay up treasure in heaven. If you're going to chase anything, chase God. Chase God. And by chasing God, you'll lay up treasures in heaven. Treasure that will last. And that's what you want, some treasure that will last. So that when, when our time here is up, um, not, not only do we not have to wonder, but other folk don't have to wonder because it, it will have fit our life living. And so uh, we pray that it has been a blessing to you. Uh, pray that um, if you haven't um, accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, Paul says in Romans 10 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. It's just that simple. Then find you a covering. Um, get in somebody's church. Get, you, get, you, get a covering over your head. Um, get you some Bible study and some Bible teaching under you so that you can begin to build a solid foundation so that when the storms of life come and they are coming they're, they are coming um, if, 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 that sin, if that saying has never been, been truer before it surely is now that it gets worse before it gets better and so we, we have to make sure we're prepared and make sure our foundation is a solid one so that when the storms begin to beat upon it we'll still be able to stand amen if there's nothing else, we're ready to give the benediction. Let us pray. 
Father God, we thank you for this time and opportunity once again. Thank you for this Bible study hour. We pray, God, um, that your will was done in this place. We pray that someone will, will, will have been blessed, that someone um, will have been inspired, that someone will have been encouraged by this Bible study lesson tonight, God. We pray that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding will be added unto our statue. We pray, God, uh, that you would just continue to bless each and every one of us, that, our, that your will be done in each and every one of our life. Bless every home, every household as represented, those here, those who have tuned in. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to be a source of help and a source of strength to us all, Heavenly Father. We pray for all of our sick and shed in. We pray for the many loved ones that have lost loved ones just this past week alone, Heavenly Father pray that you will continue to strengthen and comfort heavenly father and that you will continue to remind each and every one of us that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal that you see all and that you know all heavenly father and that you are a very present help in this our time of trouble we pray for traveling mercy as we depart from this place keep your hedge of protection around us keep us god from hurt harm danger and disease that we may arrive at our destination safely and as we do Father, we'll continue to give your name all the praise, honor, and glory that you're so worthy of. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen.